Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you all here. And for those of you who are wa uh, watching from home, I welcome you too. We're glad you're here. Uh, I have a few announcements to make. Uh, first of all, there's a council meeting at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, and the week after that, uh, on Thursday, and that's at 7 o'clock, and the week after that on Thursday is a group meeting, and they are meeting now at 3.30. Uh, there will be in envelopes in the pews from time to time, plain white envelopes, and those are for do uh, donations uh, to either the flower fund or the furnace fund. So if you want to make a donation to either of those, you can just write on the front of the envelope and put your donation in there. If you, um, if you donate in cash, be sure to put your name on it so that that donation will go onto your donation statement at the end of the year. Uh, also on the 23rd, we are going to have a picnic and there's some confusion about it. Let me clear that up. Uh, the picnic is on the 23rd right after church and we will have hot dogs and hamburgers uh, Jim is our griller, and we're going to have potato salad, three bean salad, baked beans, uh, a, a veggie tray, and lemonade, and ice cream. Did I forget anything, Kathy? That's, good. That's everything. Okay. There is no fried chicken, and you do not have to bring a dish. You do not have to bring anything. However, if you want to bring a guest to worship, they could get used to the church, they could meet the people, they could have the, enjoy the picnic and learn about our shoe drive because uh, the 23rd will be the official kickoff for our shoe drive. Does anyone else have any other announcements? Yes, Ron. Um, right after worship today, I want to see who's interested in getting together for a worship committee. That's right after church today. Okay, we need people for the worship committee. So Ron is asking if you're interested to show up. If you don't show up, we'll be coming to you to ask you because we know that's the way it works. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so that is all of the announcements. So let us begin. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sins to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us... Uh, have a moment of silence. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, has loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The gathering hymn is hymn 705, God of grace, God of glory.
be with you all. And also with you. He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, 
and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 130 responsibly. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet, with you is forgiveness, and your heart of many be revered. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, the Lord knows to keep watch in the morning. Lord, the Lord knows to keep watch in the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall be from all your sins. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what, we, what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what we for what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But no one can enter 
a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was waiting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> so I wonder if you would agree with me that today's gospel is kind of a hard one to hear. Um, and the crowd came together so that Jesus and it is uh, around Jesus they could not even eat and when his family heard it they went out to restrain him for people were saying he has gone out of his mind first we must remember that the scripture is translated from the Greek in the Greek there is no punctuation and many times a word in Greek can mean many different words in the English language. His family has gone out to restrain him. Different translations of the Bible use different words than restrain, but they all mean basically the same thing. To limit, to restrict, to keep under control, you know, think house arrest. People are saying he's gone out of his mind. Well, that phrase could be many things uh, from, the, from the Greek. It could mean he's enraged. It could mean he's beside himself. He's out of control. He's confused. But here we use, gone out of his mind. Now it's true that at times Jesus was out of step with the norm of his society. Perhaps his family would prefer that he stay closer to home or come home more often or be more involved with his family. Or perhaps they see him constantly traveling without time to eat or rest or sleep and, they're, and crushed by the crowds. And they wonder, is he safe? Is he well? Shall we bring him home? If any of the above is true, he could be out of his mind with lack of food, no sleep, no rest, no silence, no solitude. But out of his mind, why would people say that? Well, let's go back to the beginning of Mark, just for a second, and see what has been happening. After his baptism, the Spirit leads Jesus out into the wilderness, and he is there for 40 days. We know 40 days means a long time, or the right time. And in Matthew, Matthew says he is famished at the end of those 40 days. Then he is led farther out to meet Satan, where he will be tempted. What is it like for Jesus to be tempted? Is he concerned? Is he angry? What is it like to face Satan and be tested? I'm sure it takes all the strength of that human Jesus and all of the strength of that superhuman Jesus to face the accuser, the father of lies, the enemy of God. But he comes out victorious, and from there he moves to Capernaum, and he teaches in the synagogue. And they say he teaches with authority even better than the scribes. Scribes don't like that very much, I'm sure. And then while he's there, 
during the Sabbath, there is a man who has a demon. And Jesus calls out that demon on the Sabbath. He's broken the Sabbath. That's a sin. And the Pharisees and the scribes take note of that. Then, later on, he moves to Simon's house because Simon's mother is ill. And he heals her. But outside the house, there are crowds. And so he heals many of them as well. And he moves on farther. And he heals a leper. And then there's the paralytic that needs healing. And he heals him too. And one day as, the, as Jesus and the disciples are traveling in the heat, and they've traveled all over, they become hungry. So they walk into what I kind of imagine as a field of wheat. And they break off the grains of wheat, and they eat them on the Sabbath. He's broken the Sabbath again. Second. And then he is in uh, the synagogue again on the Sabbath. And who enters but a man with a withered hand? And Jesus heals the man with the withered hand. And also has the nerve to lecture the Pharisees and the Herodians that are there about the goodness and the mercy on the Sabbath. And now they are really set against him. Not only for Sabbath's sake, but also because they know that Jesus has some kind of power that draws the people to him. They, he draws the crowds, and the crowds want to be with him. And they crush in because they want to be close. They want to learn from him. They want to see him. They want to hear him. They want to touch him. The crowds are always there. Now we know crowd has two meanings. It can mean a mass of people, but it can also mean a lack of space. When you're crowded in, a lack of space physically, but also a lack of space mentally, which we often see as a shared conscience when a group, a large group, is together. So, seeing this big picture of what Jesus has been through, we can start to understand the family's concern and see clearly that those Pharisees and those scribes and the Herodians have come to despise Jesus for Sabbath's sake, but also because the crowds are with him, because the crowds follow him because he has that power to pull them to him and because the crowds love him and believe in his miracles and believe in him. And now Jesus uses his understanding, if, understand this if you can, voice. <clears throat> when when they, the scribes say, he has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of demons he has cast out the demons. And he called to them and spoke to them in parables. In a, if you can understand this, open your ears. And he gives them the little parable of the house divided. So, they think because he cast out demons, he is under the power of the demon Beelzebub. Not only is Jesus trying to teach them something, but then he gives them a very strong warning. The strong warning is in uh, verse 28. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, his spirit is an unclean spirit. And that is blasphemy about the Holy Spirit. So he's not playing around. 
He's warning them. Be careful what you say about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that leads him and that gives him the power to do the things he's doing. To teach and to do miracles. And then comes the part that kind of makes us, well, makes me anyway, catch my breath. Finally, his mother, his brothers, and his sisters make it to where he is. And the people there know that they are there, and they say to Jesus, your mother and your brothers and sisters are here, and they're asking for you. And then Jesus says, who are my mother, my brothers, and my sisters? All those who doesn't know God, they're my brothers, my sisters, and my mothers. Too many times we have read this as Jesus dismissing his family. But I, I would suggest to you that that's a wrong interpretation. He's not dismissing his family. It's just the opposite. Because the crowds that are with him, they have gone through similar things as Jesus had. They have felt the pressure of the Romans and the threat of those who are in charge of the synagogue and the temple. You must obey. But in Jesus, these people find relief and release because there is a similarity there in what they're going through. And Jesus offers them a freedom, the freedom that God offers all of us. And he offers them an image of courage and an image of hope, even in the face of his enemies. Jesus is not dismissing his family he is adding to his family. And we are a part of that family. We are no longer outsiders, people at a distance, holding up a book and reading a story. We are a part of the family. He has claimed that we are. Those who do the will of my father are my family, my brothers my sisters, and my mother. And so we are a part of the family, of the inner circle. And we have the blessing of being with Jesus who gives to us the mystery of the love of God. So it's important for us to understand what Jesus has gone through up to this point. And that he is expanding his family to include all of us. But what does all of this mean to us right here at St. Luke United Lutheran Church, June 2024, some 2,000 years later? Does it matter? Does it matter to you? Does it matter to me? Does it matter to anybody? Well, let's face it. Those who would do anything for power and authority are still here. Satan, the accuser, the father of lies, is still roaming around. The oppressed, the marginalized, the sick, the broken, they're still here. Even today. But even today, there is nothing Jesus won't do to heal the broken and save the lost. We understand Jesus if we have knowledge of the whole story. That means we've got to open the scriptures, my friends. We've got to look at the scriptures and really try to understand them, think about them, take them apart like that onion peel, and find out what it really means, what Jesus has been through, and what it means to us. If we have knowledge of the whole story, his story is as real today as it was then. That there is nothing he won't do. There is nowhere he won't go to comfort, heal, and to save his people. And I believe our continual faithfulness, 
our faith is an important part of keeping that truth alive. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Uh, the, sermon for, the sermon hymn for today is hymn 504, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. You reawaken our hearts to your mercy. We give you thanks for renewers of the church in every age, especially Columba, Aidan, and Dee, whom we commemorate today. Enliven the creativity and persistence of all seeking to transform the church into a closer vision of your beloved community. Merciful God, your presence is revealed in the shade of trees, and the growth of seeds into flowers, and in the blessing of plants granting food in their right season. Heal lands scarred by deforestation, pollution, or infestation. Teach us to cultivate the earth with respect and reverence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Our nations and communities are divided, O oh God. Teach us to listen with curiosity and mercy, even in disagreement. Grant us the humility to acknowledge our hardness of heart and make us bold in modeling cooperation for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Hear the prayers of all who cry out to you from the depths of fear, despair, or hopelessness, especially those on our prayer list. With haste, rescue victims of trafficking, exploitation, and abuse, and bless organizations and individuals who work on their behalf. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom and clarity to all who are in seasons of discernment and transition, high school graduates preparing for first jobs or new educational journeys, those who are shifting careers, and those who are navigating changes in their relationships. Accompany them with your peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Praise to you for our ancestors in faith who believed, spoke, and lived in you. Give us confidence that as Jesus was raised, so we too will be raised with all the saints into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is at this time that we will receive our offering, and we wish to thank all of you who give any of your treasure, times, or talents to St. Luke United Lutheran Church. It helps us move our mission forward and unite us all together closer to our Lord and to each other. We thank you.
The Canticle of Thanksgiving is found on page 219. <clears throat> Remember, um, let us uh, let us 
pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is 537 On Our Way Rejoicing.